Well, I will have a question about mundane and super mundane. And I know you went through the um, some description of, of those. And I just wanted to go back over that. Uh, what I've written down in my notes is about the mundane understanding is, is when you would have a more conceptual understanding of the, the practice and the teaching. And you reference about the Four Noble Truths. And that the super mundane is when you have direct knowledge, it's become experiential. And I wanted to check here, I've written down, it's through the experience of Nibbana. And I wanted to know if these terms are specific to, to, to that, or if they have um, a, a, broad, a broader usage, uh, whether you can, whether you can uh, describe supramundane as as in other aspects where you've got direct experience so that it's moved beyond the conceptual training and an understanding that you're working towards they, they don't usually use the um the supramundane um for instance this is saying by realizing nibbana with the path constitutes the supramundane right view okay um Direct penetration, uh, penetration of the truths is when you completely understand them and you start using them all the time and you understand the structure of the truths exist inside the training. You're watching it all the time, you know, so you're seeing the suffering and the cause of it. You're catching, you're, you're catching that. And when you start catching that, like when the man in New York suddenly had things happening automatically, he crossed the line with super mundane. Mm -hmm. Path, actually we never really said that to him I think back then I didn't really have a familiarity with this as well uh, at that time but but the super mundane is talking about path is uh, attainment of path is getting into the first jhana and starting down the track that's attaining path knowledge okay and and path not sometimes it's path knowledge sometimes it's just getting on track some mm. people have to go through one time to reach Sotapanna. Some people, it will happen to them where everything seems to come together and it's like all of a sudden a big, <gasps> wow, <laughs> you know, and they're sitting there in a Dhamma talk and it just goes off. And if you talk to them, all of a sudden, all these people, pieces in this puzzle, like sitting in a jigsaw puzzle on the table in the seashore, all just went <laughs> like that. And they went together. They fit. Yeah. But it's that's like an internal shift. I'm sorry. Yeah, it like is. an internal shift. It's an internal but then means like shift. your operating system has changed. Yeah. And oh. then after that happens, usually they don't have very much trouble with the brain, uh, like fighting them to do the six R's. It, the immediate, if it isn't automatic, it comes very quickly to become automatic. So, but I don't hear, this is my experience. I don't hear people, the, 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 um, the uh, the bhikkhus, I don't find them writing about super mundane except in terms of nibbana or in terms of path. But this is getting into talking about uh, the understanding, the level of understanding. But I don't think you could say it. I've got the super mundane understanding of first jhana. It's a nice idea, but I don't hear them writing about it like that. I'm just saying that. I find I've been exposed to a lot of the Buddhist wheel from Polytech Society and a lot of the early pamphlets because of Bonte, lots of those have been put in front of my face and I've been told to read those. And I don't see that coming up except in the terms of Nibbana. And a, a, a mundane, now the mundane practice and super mundane practice, I hear them talk about that towards Nibbana, toward concerned mm. with path, okay? Um, But I don't, I don't, I can't recall finding super mundane being applied to individual types of accomplishments along the path. Yeah, you know, see, there is, a, there was a chart I saw once that talked about the attainment of first jhana, the attainment of second jhana, the attainment of third jhana, and even fruition in the first jhana, fruition in the second jhana, fruition in the third jhana. And that was interesting. And and I could equate that to someone who touches the first jhana and has the joy come up and then uh, they can't uh, have it, they can't see where it happens again. See, once mm -hmm. it happens to you, 
after using a, it a while, if you go back and you start to do determinations, you play with determinations, and then if they're working right, I would say that's fruition, a good place of saying that's, you have a fruition of that, because if you say, I will sit no higher than the first jhana, and it happens, then you could say, wow, I got that one down, you know, pretty much. But but when you go to sit in your investigative meditation, um, you're not, you don't do determinations because you're trying to get all the way down the path each time. So you don't set yourself up on a determination, see? However, if you had an accident, like this is the question, what good are these determinations? We sort of fell over into that subject. But um, if you had an accident and you wanted to uh, handle it, like when I was under the tree, I did a determination, I will stay here in the third jhana. You know, that's where I wanted to be because I could let go of my body completely and I would be there. And then, and then I was just observing everything that was happening until they came uh, to, to lift the tree off. <laughs> yeah, see? So it's a handy tool to have this development, but you develop all, you develop your line the way we do it is you develop your line all the way down to the eighth jhana and try to go through at least once. Then you would start to look at learning determinations. I don't know how they do it in other traditions. I haven't investigated that much. Yeah. Okay.